Hello and welcome to the channel. I've got two rods in the water and I'm fishing. Where am I fishing? Where are you fishing? I'm fishing in Shoreham. What are you doing in Shoreham? 60 miles away from where you live, Mark. Well, very kindly invited by Nick Mann, one of the subscribers to the channel. He's a regular contributor to all the discussions and on the uh, community tab. And we've been messaging each other and chatting about fishing bits and pieces. And he said, why don't you come down my neck of the woods and have a quick go on the beaches down here? So here I am, rocked up in the fishing wagon, unpacked my kit, I'm on the beach and I'm fishing. And it's mid-June, the day before the longest day, and the weather's rubbish. <laughs> I've got the bigaloo up. <laughs> It's not an igaloo, it's a bigaloo. <laughs> so I was fishing last night, had those two little pups. So if you've been watching the channel and you watch what I uh, uploaded today, um, yeah, I had two little uh, smooth hound pups and they were weeny, tiny, tiny little things. But welcome all the same. If I could replicate anything like that tonight, because the Solent, another aspect of coming here to Shoreham today, is the Solent's not fishing very well. There's a lot of weed, um, and it's, it's just, there's nothing there. <laughs> you can only catch what's in front of you. I will apologise for the noise behind me because even though there's miles of beach that way and miles of beach that way, I've got a hormone party behind me. Young girls and boys trying to impress each other. Um, hormones racing, laughing at jokes that aren't funny. But someone's going to get lucky. I'm pretty confident that someone behind me at some point tonight, once it gets dark, when it gets to the witching hour, someone's going to get lucky. Because <laughs> you can hear all the telltale signs. <laughs> so yeah, so what am I fishing? I'm very predictable. <laughs> no, I'm not. The um, up and over rigs. So I'm starting out with up and over rigs. And then I might swap one closer in with a free hook clip down. Nick I'm just watching my rod tip I thought I had an inquiry then maybe not so Nick very kindly yesterday dug some rag, uh, ragworm I got ragworm on the brain he dug some lugworm and I haven't seen lugworm like this before look at that bad boy <laughs> it's a snake it's an absolute snake. And clearly, if that's what you get from the beach here, I'm fairly confident that's what the fish are going to be eating. So I've started off up and over rig, bluey, wrapped in squid, and fired two rods out. That's where I'm comfortable, that's what I know. But with Nick's guidance, I am going to swap over onto those honking great big live lugworm at some point. And I might have an itsy bitsy rod out just to see if there's some small stuff out there. What can you catch from here? Well, I've been reliably informed that there are rays, there can be hounds, um, bass, all the usual suspects, you know, straps and all the rest of it. And it's a shingle beach and then it goes down and then there's sand, I don't know, 100, 150 yards out before it then goes deeper. So Nick, point of the finger. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's further along the beach in his natty fluorescent salopettes. He's got two rods in the water and he's fishing. So we've got four rods out. So with a bit of luck, between us, we're going to winkle something out. It's a bit windy. It's a bit windy. And to be honest, it's a bit cloudy. <laughs> I did think mid-June and all that lot that I'd be able to do away with not having a shower up. But with the camera gear and all the rest of it, I didn't want to risk it. Nick's delivered because he's put me onto my first bream of the year. I am absolutely blown away. I've tried a couple of venues where there was a faint hope of a bream, but look at that bad boy. Hey, what an absolute little peach. He's a Brahma. I'm chuffed to bits. Look at his flippy floppy tail. <laughs> A little bream. Smile for the camera. <laughs> I am absolutely 
chuffed to bits. It was worth coming to Shoreham for. Shoreham's delivered. What a cracker. I'm going to go and put him back in. Absolute stonker. Love it. Better get on and do some fishing because both rods have been going nuts. I've missed two bites already. Stop talking, more fishing. I'll get this critter back. <sighs> you give a little good tussle as well coming in. I half thought, I did genuinely think it, think it might have been a small bass. But no, my first bream of the year. It's a bit late coming as well. <laughs> but hey, right, need to sort my gear out. Get back out there. Get so I just had that little, uh, that little bream. Chuff the pits for that, it's cracking, isn't it? Of all the things I could have caught tonight, you know, big, small and different, a bream, top of my list to make me happy. And that has made me really happy. So I'm chuffed to bits. Nick's happy, because obviously the pressure's on for him. He's invited me down here. <laughs> and you want to catch something, don't you? But I'll show you what I'm going to do to bait up. This is exactly what I just caught that one on. So a thumb size piece of bluey. And I'm putting it on a dual bait needle, a double bait needle. And the reason why I do that, he says, where's my little cloth gone? Can't find it. Where's it gone? Oh, it's behind me, that's why. I put it on a dual bait needle. And the reason why I put it on a dual bait needle is it stops the bait from spinning. So something as soft and as delicate as bluey, and this has defrosted, so it's very, very soft. Um, it all goes a bit, look, you can see literally liquids running out of it. It's an amazing bait. I do love bluey as a bait. Even more so now it's caught me a little bream. Okay, so that's that part. So we've just elastic on a thumb sized piece of bluey, small piece of bluey. And then just to add something, we're gonna put on a sliver of squid. I've just laid it over the top. Now we need to elasticate that on because it won't stay there. In fact, it's more than likely going to fall off if I'm not careful. And because it's the dual needle, look, I can just hold it and it doesn't twist, it doesn't spin around. If it was a single needle, it would have a tendency to spin. You'd have to hold it while you was doing it. And I do like crisscrosses because it seems to trap all the good stuff inside. And I know what you're saying, there's too much elastic, Mark. I love the elastic, you know that. And rather than trying to pull through the bait now, I hold the elastic before I snap it. And that's my little parcel of loveliness. Single 3 hook. And I'm gonna feed it in through the top and back out. Very soft bait, gotta be careful with this. Get it to the point where it's going to align and then I'm going to feed it back in. And back out. And I might have regret, I might regret that because it is so soft. It's just literally, I've got a job not to pull it apart. But now the hook and the line is inside the bait pull it all up tight and there it is no more elastic required nice proud hook and a small little compact bait that's going out next just pull that off the needle and there we have it one little parcel of loveliness hopefully Get another bream, get a bigger one.
Although we're having some fishing success, and obviously that little fish that I've just caught, the wind's really picked up. There's weed being picked up on the line, and it's quite rough. It doesn't feel like June at all. <laughs> Come back, summer. <laughs> Don't be gone. Be gone, evil one. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel like summer at all. It's not cold. It's just not nice. We want it to be nice. It's about 45 minutes before high water. And the wind and the tide has conspired. It's whipped all the weed up. I've just had to bring both rods in. Both rods were absolutely bent double, were under the weight of the weed. And you could only reel it in about three or four foot, strip it all off, three or four foot, strip it all off, two foot, strip it off, four inches, strip it. You get the idea. What an absolute nightmare. So let's just check to see what time is. Yeah, 11 o'clock. So it's three quarters of an hour before high tide. Um, <laughs> messages coming up. Obviously I uploaded the video today so there's loads of messages coming in. Um, yeah, so I need a brew and I need to crack open the chocolate biscuits. I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you what we're battling. I've reeled both rods in at the moment. <laughs> that doesn't look too bad I suppose you could say you know just clean it up Mark sort it out get it out again yeah I'd get that look at this it's on everything and it doesn't just come off either look at it it just absolutely wraps itself around everything <laughs> I'm not bringing it all into camera shot that is all the way up all over the rod all over me <laughs> I might as well take that weight off, and I. What an absolute nightmare. What started off a really promising evening, had me in fits and giggles and chuffed the bits, is now turned into a weed fest. And not just any old weed fest. A weed fest. <laughs> weed is a very important thing, and I understand its value. But I wish it would. <laughs> we don't swear, do we? We don't swear. That'll have to get beeped out. I'll have to figure out some clever editing to get rid of that now. Because I want to use it. Because that's how I feel. Look at it. I've got a bucket of water. Hey, clean weight. Mm. <laughs> that's amazing we might even this might even actually bring the trip to a halt because it's another 45 minutes now until high water do we stick it out that's the decision do we stick it out it was going so well The roller coaster ride of Mark Williams Sea Angling. <laughs> Stick it out. <laughs> I'm just going to clean some of the gear up, sort some rigs out, have a word with Nick in a minute, see what he thinks. I don't want him to feel like he's under any pressure. No pressure, Nick. <laughs> I'll wind up merchant, you know. I managed to get more refills for my Innova elastic little container thing. I know, I use too much elastic. Someone's going to tell me off. Let's clean it. Look, even the, even the bait's covered in weed. What fish is going to find that? No little bream's going to find that, is he? Unfortunately, packing up, the weather's beat us. When I say the weather's beat us, the weed has beat us. So the wind's picked up. 15, 20 mile an hour, um, sea spray. We can deal with all that. I've had to put my coat on. It's mid-June, but it's turned cold. Temperatures drop right down. But the wind and the sea have stirred up. The weed is horrendous. So I put another rod out, a single rod, just as a trier, just as, you know, come, come a long way. Well, 60 miles, fish a session. Thought, right, give it another go. Put a rod out, see what happens. 10 minutes later, Rod tips, heavily pulsing, 
and I've just spent 20 minutes picking weed off of the braid. The braid is like a weed magnet. So if there's a downside to braid, it's the weed. Now, Nick's got mono on his multipliers and he's having the same problem. So it's not just that, it is literally the conditions we're, we're fishing at the moment but trying to get the weed off of the braid, it is an absolute nightmare. So I've cleaned up, packed up both reels. I'm gonna start dismantling rods, get the rod sleeves and call it a night to an early bath. <laughs> like the old football, isn't it? Get sent off early bath, get the bath all to yourself. Um, yeah, so gonna have a nice, safe, slow drive home, have myself a coffee, get myself back, get myself cleaned up tomorrow workshop video workshop video because my stuff is absolutely all my kit is trashed it is absolutely even i'm trash look because you're dealing with soaking wet and weed it's trashing my hands um yeah it's a workshop video tomorrow but i'm happy i'm happy because i caught that bream chuffed the bits i love it new species for me never targeted them i've been missing out i now realize i've been missing out I know some bream marks as well. There's one near where I live. Just never considered fishing for them. Um, yeah, so thank you for joining me. Tight lines and happy fishing. I hope to spend some time with you again sometime soon. And stand by to stand by. Another video winging its way very soon. Workshop video tomorrow. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>